crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Bugatti Veyron. This is actually the Grand Sport version from 2010 and this car comes courtesy of Carl to me. So make sure to check out his channel. The link is in the pinned comment as well as the description. Now this is the car which started it all. This is an iconic car. This is an automobile engineering masterpiece because the Veyron was the first car to make 1000 horsepower factory car obviously. And let's straight away open the front of this vehicle. And there you see there's some amount of storage here. There's no partition because obviously in the country this car is sold. It did not have to meet any of that. And his other car is right there. 911 GT3 RS. Listen to this. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Absolute crazy. So, you know, you can keep your various aspects of, I mean, various things you can keep here. There's insulation there. It's not needed at all. And it says Bugatti Automobile chassis number 8, country of destination Qatar. Let's just shut this. Now, if you notice one thing, this design is actually similar to what we have seen in older Bugatti models from the 1920s and 30s. Honestly, we have not seen it, but I'm just telling you that. Anyways, now the car has been completely lowered. So, it has a standard ground clearance of 125 mm. After 240 km per hour, something like that, it reduces to 90 mm. And right now, the ground clearance seems to be 65 mm, which is the lowest. Actually, when you go for the top speed, that is when it reduces to the least. So, I think it's... The wing position is such. Now the lights were updated with the Grand Sport. This is the Grand Sport. So you get a projector setup. You get LED DRS as well. And these are the LED indicators of course. However, the earlier model which was launched in 2006 got halogen lights. Yeah, halogen. Can you imagine that? In those times, Bugatti was actually still giving full LEDs at the rear. Now you can see it's very low. Obviously, Carl deals in crypto. That's why his name is written right here. And crypto is written right there. The tire size happens to be massive it's so massive that i can't even read it okay jokes aside i'm actually trying to find a tire size which i don't remember on the top of my mind but anyways there it's written somewhere okay 265 and uh, you can see the alloy wheels were different on the grand sport says bugatti here red colored brake calipers from the side you realize that the length of this car is actually uh, around 4.5 meters almost around that and the wheelbase is 2.7 meters it has got multiple air intakes so there's an air intake here to cool the engine there are two right there this car has got 10 freaking radiators the tire size of the rear is even bigger it's so big it's so big that i can't even imagine what the tire size would be but anyways <laughs> let's come and show you the width of the tires from below that is the massive tire on this vehicle you get rear parking sensors you do not get a rear spoiler i mean you don't get a rear camera sorry i'm getting blown away by the car rear parking sensor dual exhaust there and two of them coming from here so quad exhaust pipe massive diffuser treatment you got these quad lights as well eb etoro bugatti the logo high mounted stop lamp they are two spoilers so there's a rear spoiler and there's a wing as well which actually deploys under heavy braking okay that's an air brake and then everything is exposed here that's the exhaust this one is not running on a standard exhaust it's a custom exhaust which is 30 kgs lighter or at 60 horsepower as well the engine bay is actually completely exposed because it needs to cool itself of course and this is where the fuel actually goes so it has got this on both the sides what's the logic one is for engine oil because you can't open this right only a technician can open this at bugatti so if you want to fill in engine oil you can do that from that side of course okay the door is locked here let's come to the other side this is where the engine oil goes so you can top it up as well now the thing is that lovely door pocket here which auto shuts lot of leather leather here on the switches as well these are actually the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment and this is to lock the car unlock the car and all see the bugatti is made up right there now the seats are full leather of course there's some amount of storage space there okay and you know what manual adjust seats yeah that's kind of crazy yeah you have to press this to move the seat which is unbelievable but then obviously weight saving now there's some storage space here with a 12 volt charging socket this is the electric parking brake this is the top speed slot where you put in the key for top speed of course this to open the fuel lid this is to open the engine oil cover like this okay there i press this uh no it's not going to open right now because the car is actually on there you can see seats are very comfortable and nice this is obviously the convertible so this panel actually comes out this is a targa convertible these are the levers for adjustment of the lights and this is obviously for the mirror now let me get inside and tell you my goodness it is so difficult to get inside <laughs> there's a fortuner which is going side say so let me just shut this oh my god it shuts with a proper thud and uh, you know what seats are really nice and comfortable 
they have this uh, dummy thingy if it's for right hand drive market there will be the controls for the mirrors this is the control for the air conditioning okay we are going to turn off the air conditioning right away so this is actually to increase or decrease the air temperature yeah that's kind of nice so yeah, we are just going to shut the air conditioning if you notice one thing now it actually lights up here it's lighting up in orange cd changer given right here this is for the audio system of the vehicle yeah audio quality is quite nice this is a burmester sound system there's a clock here ac vents here there's an ac vent here as well this is for the hazard light and there opens the glove box now thing is to make changes to the clock there are the switches for the same okay there's a fire extinguisher there's none here this is actually the key of the vehicle so here i'll just show you this key cost ten thousand dollars if you lose it it's exact same key as other vw group cars like the polo and the vento and all that stuff but it's very expensive they could have done something different at least flip key first you have to put the key here okay flip it like that there you can see that is the instrument cluster okay the audio system turns on on its own first you can see the dashboard is amazing and then the instrument cluster is full of details because this is the tachometer there is a speedometer right there marked at 420 kilometers per hour here you obviously get a fuel meter and there is an engine temperature meter and this is actually the power meter telling you how much power and because it's a vw group car engine check light is obviously on here you get a multi-information display this car does not get a screen at all to make it timeless steering has no buttons as such magnesium paddles here this is the phone holder ac vent here is actually shaped like the accelerator pedal which is kind of nice and unique and there's some storage space here where you can actually plug in your old apple device but this does not open this does open though there's some storage space there thankfully and uh, you can see the engine from here of course and the best thing is now this thing opens very nicely and sweetly i can't even see where it is what yeah there okay there is no hinge or anything to it that's kind of nice and light controls here on the top you can turn on the lights like that so wonderful looking cabin kind of timeless and the horn uh, horn is nice actually okay this is the lever for the headlight control that is a lever for the wiper control we'll try and use a wiper while driving the car of course and overall it's a fantastic cabin but honestly you want to know how to drive let's start driving right away Alright, let's turn on the car. Okay, first you have to put it like this. Oh, ho, ho. absolutely rose to life. We get it to drive and straight away we are off. I am actually feeling nervous for the very first time while driving a Bugatti. Okay, a little bit slowly, slowly because yeah, there is some sand here. But four-wheel drive, so we're not going to get stuck. It's an unbelievable feeling driving a Bugatti. Trust me on this. <laughs> okay, let's quickly run through the numbers before I start giving it the beans. So this guy is actually powered by a... I was going to say 4 litre, it's 8 litre fast It's an 8 litre W16 engine, which is <laughs> actually two way aids glued together type of a thingy happening here. So the horsepower output is a mind numbing 1000, yeah, 1000 horsepower. Yeah, we're just going to turn and oh my goodness, it does feel a bit heavy around the corners, but hey, I'm not complaining because obviously that's expected from a car which is having this level of performance and power. And this is a car which attracts so much attention that everyone around will turn to see it because this is at the end of the day a bugatti freaking wear on and there people are actually seeing what is happening there so obviously we have got all wheel drive and that's the only way so much power can be put down so 1000 horsepower and 1250 newton meters of torque so how was this car actually conceived firstly it's not difficult to drive okay so basically what happened was that the volkswagen group head was on a buying spree in 2000 sorry 1998 he went ahead and bought lamborghini he outbid bmw to get uh, rolls royce as well but that deal fell through so he got bentley instead and then he was like okay fine now i'm going to do something more crazy i'm actually going to pick up uh, i'd rather bring back bugatti so he bought that for 50 million which is like 250 crores in those times and uh, then what he did was uh, when he was going in a train from in tokyo that is in somewhere in japan he actually designed an engine in a rough sketch uh, in the train that is on an envelope and that actually had and i kid you not a w18 engine diagram which was like a 6.5 liter engine which actually makes me stop here we get it into okay we are already in handling mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator okay we get into sport left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator off we go come on holy mother 
rather this is what a bugatti is all about absolutely insane performance it's showing me i'm using 1000 horsepower the grunt is absolutely crazy it doesn't let go at all it keeps pulling and pulling there is no let go in performance there's no let go in power it's just an unending thrust and grunt and massive pull as well so there are four turbochargers there are 10 freaking radiators and these tires will only last 4000 kilometers and when you do your third tire change which is 12000 kilometers that is the time you also need to go ahead and change the rims of this vehicle the wheels have to be changed at that interval to mind blowing acceleration it pulls like crazy it's a seven speed gearbox which is dual clutch of course you've got paddle shifters to manually take control of things and around the corners it actually behaves quite well so there's so much grip on offer and there's absolutely mind numbing performance 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.46 seconds 0 to 200 kilometers per hour in just 7.3 seconds 0 to 300 kilometers per hour in 16.7 seconds 0 to 400 kilometers per hour in 55.6 seconds which is actually 30 uh, sorry 20 seconds slower than the bugatti chiron but what a performance absolutely mind blowing that's so many limited edition now they kept on coming up with another limited edition time and again and you won't believe it that <laughs> unbelievable the steering also has good amount of feel and feedback so they had a lot of additions and then they came up with something called a super sport which actually had 1200 horsepower and 1500 newton meters of torque which was still faster oh my god there we have hit a dead end sort of a thingy which means that we have to take a u-turn of course because obviously i don't want to take the car there so i was telling you that they had this uh, okay firstly we get into we get into reverse we are into reverse right now it's a nervous feeling driving a two million dollar bugatti yeah so they actually launched the car for not much money yeah it was priced at roughly 1.5 million when it was launched 1.5 million dollar which is around 10 crores but you know what the pricing has gone through the roof right now this car is 12 years old and it was bought for approximately <laughs> 2 million dollars which is absolutely insane money no matter which way you look at it there is just unending performance this is unending power this car is so expensive because it's an engineering masterpiece okay nobody had actually made such a car the Volkswagen group had actually went ahead and announced that they're going to make a car with 1000 horsepower with Bugatti and it was going to cross 400 kilometers per hour <laughs> and the engineers were like Kya baat kar hai, bhai? Aise kaise hoga? so they had to really struggle they actually bought the company in 1998 in 2001 they announced and it took them four years to bring the car because they had a lot of technical problems and challenges the car would just not go above 370 kilometers per hour then they decide top speed key would reduce the this thing ground clearance completely like 65 mm that is how crazy it is Every time you get onto the throttle now, it pushes you back in the seat. This is surely a car which is having great appreciation in terms of its pricing because the, this thing keeps going up and up and up and oh my god, the brakes are so good. So here we are going to press launch control. Oh, launch control button is hard. It's not activated. I don't know why. Anyways, we get into sport mode. Yeah, then also it doesn't activate. Left on the brake, right on the accelerator and off we go. Initial lag. blinking like mad and then it pulls like crazy oh my god what a car <laughs> so basically the challenge was to get past 370 kilometers per hour so this whole top speed key came into the picture of uh, you know making the car as slippery as possible it has got an air brake as well which obviously deploys and has the heavy braking and in case the brakes fail the electric parking brake or the handbrake actually has abs in it so that the car does not spin if you try to use that of course this car absolutely gobbles up the kilometers like nobody's business that's the level of performance and then around the corners also it is so unbelievably good oh ho oh, oh. ho the thrust from this engine the grunt the way it pulls everything is unbelievably nice it's just so good this is a bugatti which is a classic because this is the car which was a game changer obviously we know that now cars are becoming more powerful but this is the car which actually is the automobile big breakthrough <laughs> for the level of performance and level of madness that it brought to the table because no other car did what this car did four turbochargers 10 freaking radiators it's unbelievable in fact uh, like i was telling you the tires cost a bomb to replace the tires it's like 20 lakh rupees Okay, 
like okay as soon as i cross a certain speed it shows me handling mode because it obviously reduces the clearance uh, ground clearance of the car drops it down further fuel emissions is like 2 to 3 km per liter there are times that you have to fill the car twice because it just keeps drinking like mad because you come on 8 liter engine is maddening it's unbelievable engine with four freaking turbochargers it drinks so much air at high speeds now in one minute that people actually breathe that much air in four freaking days that's the level of uh, hunger it has Yeah, so I was telling you about this issue. Then another issue they had when after certain speed the car kept spinning and spinning and couldn't hold on to a high top speed because you know obviously maintaining their high speed stability is not easy. But what Bugatti did was <laughs> they actually reduced the clear uh, like the ground clearance of the car as much as possible. So everything was all about aerodynamics. The more the aerodynamic the car, the better it would perform, and that's what they actually went about going because they were like you know at the end of the day what really matters is that this car should be able to do these speeds without spinning and being like comfortable so basically this is a mix of bentley and lamborghini oh there's a reverse parking camera i never noticed it so basically the comfort of a bentley and the performance of a lambo and just 10x all of that to give you something which is absolutely mad in terms of performance this is a car which honestly blows your mind this is unbelievable oh, 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 oh. oh my god oh oh it's crazy car what a car it's next level madness to say It is so freaking loud. This exhaust makes it louder still. You know, I've sat in the Chiron. The Chiron is very similar. The engine is the same. They've actually worked on the engine. But you know what? This is the OG. Oh my God! Brakes are so strong, mind blowing. So the experience of driving this car is absolutely mind blowing. Okay, I really enjoy driving it. I I feel it's unbelievable engineering expertise, a masterpiece in its own right. A car which blows your mind in multiple ways with the level of performance that you can actually drive it at this this speed also. So you can comfortably drive it at 80 kilometers per hour without thinking about anything because this is a car which actually feels at home even at lower speeds. So uh, this is a car which is able to do low speed driving like a Golf and high speed mad runs like a Bentley or a Lambo. So it's the best Best of both worlds, without a doubt, and Lambos. I mean, nothing in front of this car. That is the level of performance. That's the level of grunt. That's the level of engineering masterpiece. This is a car which, honestly. Oh my god it's blown my mind. So guys that was a quick vlog of this Bugatti Veyron. So this is actually known as the 16.4 EB uh, Grand Sport. Uh, EB actually stands for Eto Bugatti 16.4 16 cylinders, four turbochargers and then I can actually make a one hour video on this car. It's so important, it's such a masterpiece and all. But for now we're just going to wrap it up here because no matter how much I talk it's not going to be enough. That is what this car is all about. If you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up. That's the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye